class, I just wanted to take a minute and explain to you how we can approach essay number two. And so what I have up here are my notes. Um, we can see the questions and a brief outline that I, that I planned for each one. So let me go over the questions first. Now, before you start writing, go back and read the discussion board for each of the authors you plan to discuss. That way you'll have all that information refreshed in your mind and it'll also help you start thinking about how you'll write your essay. Um, so here's the instructions. Write a detailed essay type answer for any one of the following questions. So number one, why will you characterize Lou's story as an allegory? How is it different from Voltaire's satire? Now, in this question, I would first have an introduction that provides a little background on Lu Xun because he's the main you know focus of this essay and on the story diary of a madman and then your thesis statement should be something to the likes of Lu's story is an allegory because what makes it an allegory um, and then in the body of your paper you'll get into a little more detail there so for body paragraph number one what is an allegory Go back and look at the definition of an allegory. Explain that in your own words. And then in that next body paragraph, get into the details of Diary of a Madman and what makes it an allegory. Remember that an allegory has two levels of meaning. There's the literal meaning and the symbolic meaning. So make sure that you explain both of those if you choose to do this um, particular essay question. And then in the last body paragraph, think about how allegory is different from satire. Satire, remember, uses humor, either exaggeration or mockery, to critique problems in society. Allegory can also critique problems in society, but it doesn't use humor to do that. Not necessarily. And then conclude, remember, any conclusion, you're going to have a summary of your main points and some perspective on the topic. So sum up your main points and leave some perspective on the meaning of Lu Xun's story. What do you think he's trying to say with his allegory? Okay, so that's number one. The second option, you can choose to do number two. And that reads, how do male authors like Ibsen, Lu, and Borowski represent women and womanhood? How is a woman writer like Silko's treatment of this topic quite different from theirs? So in this essay, you're thinking about what male authors represent in their stories and what a female author represents in her story. And so in the introduction, remember your focus on this essay is female characters and womanhood. And so introduce the female characters that are important from Ibsen, Lou, and Borowski. And then you want to introduce Leslie Marmon Silco. Your thesis statement should be a response to that second question. How are their female characters different from the yellow woman in Silco's story? And so for body paragraph number one, this is where you're going to devote some time to these other female characters by male authors. So in the first body paragraph, I would devote that to Ibsen. The two important female characters we have there are Hedda and Thea. And so describe them. I have down here, they're both unhappily married women. Um, and we see how they're judged according to their service as a wife, right? What a good woman is, is a, a woman who is married with children, nurturing, etc. cetera. Um, so that's how Ibsen represents womanhood. Um, then in body paragraph number two, talk about the female characters in Lou and Borowski. How do they represent femininity or womanhood? In Lou, remember, there is the woman who threatens to eat her child. She says, I could just take a bite out of you. And she becomes this kind of monstrous figure. In Borowski, remember, there is the one woman that attracts the narrator's attention because she stands out among many of the others going to the extermination showers. Um, so think about those women. And then in body paragraph number three, this is where you're going to show, you're going to tie it all together and say how Yellow Woman is different from these other characters. 
Leslie Marmon Silco creates a character, I think, that, you know, breaks a lot of the female stereotypes. Um, so in this last paragraph is when you drive your point home and explain how is Silco's representation of womanhood significantly different from male authors. And then your conclusion would be some, again, a summary of your main points and also some perspective on the importance of women authors because we need women to define womanhood as much as we might need men to define womanhood. So last option is number three. And this is focused on Tadeusz Borowski and Leslie Marmon Silko. So for number three, how do Borowski and Silko criticize racism in their stories? So the introduction should be some background on both authors, who's Borowski, who is Silko, and explain a little bit of the context of why of, or how they were victims of racism. Both of their stories deal with that. And then your thesis would be, how do they criticize racism? What do they have to say about racism in their stories? In body paragraph number one, I would focus on Borowski. Look closely at his story and pull out the instances where you see racism. And there's a lot. I mean, you have to consider the fact that this is the Holocaust. And Borowski shows us a, an extermination camp. So... That is, you know, one of the worst, most violent images of racism is, you know, people being indiscriminately killed. Um, for paragraph number two, focus on Silco. Look at the racism in her story. Um, consider the historical context there, too, and the American treatment of Native Americans. How does Silco criticize that racism in her story? And then body paragraph number three, this is where you can provide some really good reflection on the role of literature to help us defeat racism. How can stories from marginalized voices help us to defeat racism? Let me actually correct this here. Okay. How is lifting up their voices a way to combat racism? And then for the conclusion here, you want to sum up your main points. Look at, you know, mention how both authors reflect on racism in their stories and how studying world literature can help us better understand those who are different from us. So I hope that my explanations have given you some, some ideas on what you're going to do with your essay. Again, I'm going to go back to the top of my document here and... Remember, before writing your essay, go back and read the discussion board. So if you're doing essay number one, go back and read the discussion board for Voltaire. That'll help refresh your memory so you'll be able to explain how his satire is different from Lu Xun. Obviously, go back and read the discussion board for Lu Xun if you're doing essay number one. Okay, so... I am also available via email if anybody has a question or if you want me to look over something before submitting it, please don't hesitate to ask me for help. That's what I'm here for. Remember, this essay is worth 15% of the final grade, just like essay number one. So go back and review essay one and my comments before you start writing this essay too. Okay, so I'm available via email. Don't hesitate to send me a message if you need me.